Welcome to the latest edition of Inside Carolina. I'm your host, Hannah Horn, a proud alumna of the university. In this episode, we'll show you a unique program that's helping stroke survivors recover their ability to speak by working together to produce a play. But first, have you ever wondered who is in that cocky suit? Well, a recent graduate's video went viral after she revealed her identity during commencement. So let's meet Cocky. It's biomedical engineering graduate Sarah Sylvester. Join us as we go Inside Carolina. Everyone knows Cocky, the lovable Gamecock mascot that was first introduced in 1980. But do you really know Cocky, as in who's inside that suit? Usually not. Well, there's a tradition at Carolina Commencement where graduating students who have donned the cocky suit reveal their identities. What an exciting few days for you. What is it like to finally have revealed that you are cocky? It's been absolutely amazing, incredible, scary, vulnerable, all of the above. Last month, biomedical engineering senior Sarah Sylvester revealed her identity as the masked bird. So no one knew that you were under the suit? Yes, so pretty much how kind of the unspoken rule is, is that only the people who have to know get to know. Okay. So for me, it was obviously my team. I had to tell my parents and then my roommates. They had to know there's no way I could live with them and not tell them. But other than that, I mean, I had a whole circle of friends who had no idea. Because you cannot hide these shoes in your closet from your roommates. <laughs> no, you cannot hide, it's a, a lot of things and you cannot hide that. And then the just the amount of times that I would just have to kind of walk away and leave the place for hours at a time and random days and random times of the day, there's no way I could hide that from my roommates. It has to be so incredibly hot <laughs> in that suit. I, how did you, rain, sleet, or snow, but it has to be so incredibly hot in that suit. It is, that's definitely one one of the biggest, Ooh. I guess, culture shocks of it all is yeah. the first time you're in it, and especially nothing can compare to one of the first football games of the oh. season. But once you get past that, we call it heat endurance. You have to okay. build up the heat endurance because not only do you have to have the endurance to just constantly perform and run around and not stop, but not only that, it is like you said, very hot. And so you have to build up almost like, we compare it to doing a high cardio workout and a sauna. Like hot you, yoga. Yes, yeah. pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. And so, but once you get past kind of that first football season, everything else is like downhill from there, but it's definitely no easy feat, that's for sure. No easy feat, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> Her story went national with more than 1 million views on TikTok, plus appearances on the Today Show and World News Tonight. So can you show me like like a popular cocky move? Like you would sometimes like sway? Is that kind of a big thing you do? Yes, yeah, so like for example, one of our most popular songs, I guess, is 2001. That's like cocky's number one song. Comes out of the box to it at football games. So that's part of what I did at graduation. Okay. Where you kind of like have to sway back and forth. Okay. When you're like building up to that big crescendo and maybe like give some taps on the ground. Oh, I can't even get down there. <laughs> do some like spurs and then on the big one, you just jump up and run around, go crazy. You have obviously the iconic beak flap, you know, spurs, just getting everybody hype. The eyes of the world were on you making that big reveal, but now the eyes of the world are on you inside Carolina. Tell us, what are you doing next? So Carolina cannot get rid of me that easily. Uh -huh. I am sticking around for another year. And then after that, my passion is being in biomedical engineering. So my aim is to find a job with a company somewhere that does something like that, you know, fuel my passions and in a different way, take it the more engineering medical route, but hopefully still be able to, to help others and bring some of that to people as well. So. Well, they will be getting a very spirited, energetic employee. <laughs> we say go Cox, but today let's say go cocky. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations, Sarah, and we wish you the best. Well, it is an unfortunate reality that South Carolina has one of the highest rates of stroke. And one of the common side effects of stroke is what's called aphasia. It's a communications disorder that makes it difficult to speak. Well, two University of South Carolina professors are teaming up to help. There are lots of ways to communicate and sometimes we have to hold space for people. Boom, boom, boom. Aphasia, it doesn't mean you can't communicate. It means that you communicate sometimes differently and that's completely okay. 
We are putting on a play with speakers who have aphasia. So the actors on stage have aphasia, which is a language impairment in adults. We've been doing this drama club for about four years. It's an opportunity for them to use communication that it goes just beyond oral communication. That's what the theater does. It allows you to communicate in lots of different ways. All of the participants who will be in the play um, have had a stroke and acquired aphasia from their stroke, so um, they're doing a great job um, acting. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> aphasia is a language processing disorder that is usually acquired after you have a stroke, and it does not affect um, intellect at all, just your the ability to get it out. Yes, your ability to get words out. I what? At first, my stroke uh, had I couldn't speak zero, no at all. Now it's much better. So communication is problem, not the brain. It's extra frustrating because of the lack of aphasia awareness in the general public. Aphasia is not an intelligence problem. It's a language disorder. I started working with the Aphasia Lab on the research projects when I was a freshman, and I found out that they have this drama club, which was so cool because I absolutely love theater. <laughs> this is just like another way to support people in being able to engage in theater and be more confident and be able to be themselves and be creative, which is something that we all need, I think. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun, and I think it's just really great that we can all come together and have a joint goal with all these different brilliant minds. Ever since I've joined, I have really made my own relationships with them, and um, by like the second time I was there, I was already like friends with them. The title of our play is Anything But Cinderella, and that's because the story of Cinderella is used widely in aphasia research. Many of the people in our research have to tell that story a lot, and they're sick of it, frankly. It's fun. It's funny. It's fun. It's, fun. Um. it's so much fun, and it's a really creative environment, and everybody gets to participate. There are okay. places in the play where people also really talk about their own experiences. They said, who's that? It's really cool to see how they work in their own personal narratives as well. You like it? I love you. I'm yes. by dog. Mr. and Mrs. James Bond. We're just having fun and yeah. we're trying to trying to work our speech. People can't say too much, but they like to have fun and let's yeah. let's do that. <laughs> it gives them more confidence out in the world, which is just absolutely exciting. I think the ability for us to put on this play does say something about the particular strengths we have at USC. There is an environment for interdisciplinarity that's strongly encouraged. I'm in public health, uh, Peter is in theater and dance, two different schools in the university with uh, not a lot of overlap typically, um, but we collaborate well and it leads to something beautiful. I hope that stroke survivors get to see this performance and maybe it inspires them to get out there and do something they love or do something new and the sooner they get out and just take the leap and try to communicate in any modality, is maybe the first step in the recovery. I want people to know we can do stuff and that we can make people laugh and cry. Mm -hmm. We are we do our thing. We all survivors. We have a difficult time in our lives, but you still move on. Amen. What a heartwarming story. If you or a loved one is affected by aphasia, be sure to visit the USC Aphasia Lab online. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with friends, family, and fellow alumni. We always thank you for joining us inside Carolina.